Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are showing you a pretty neat trick for how to speed up your retopology in Maya. This is actually one of these one weird tricks, which, uh, <laughs> which we, no one wants you to know about. Which and nobody wants to know I about. I guess no one really knows about it, that's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is this is a trick which was uh, something we just recently learned by our friend Will Burdett at DeMille, who, uh, who saw that we were complaining that Maya was slow for retop, and he was like, hey, this is how you can fix it. <laughs> so thanks, Will. Before we get into the video, we just quickly want to talk to you about one of our tutorials, which is um, sculpting a realistic male face in, face in ZBrush. We cover how to sculpt this guy from scratch from a sphere. And this is also the example we're using in uh, yep. in the sixth tutorial as well. So final result. And if you want to re this guy, you can just bring in an OBJ from ZBrush. But oftentimes you can find that it gets really heavy. It just gets far too heavy for Maya to even to handle. In this case, we have around 3 million polys, which in our system, which is a fairly fast system, you can see the density. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> what it, density? <laughs> it's, um, it's a, it works actually okay on our computer, yeah. but on if you're in a lower tier system, you're definitely gonna have issues with bringing in just straight up the polys. Yeah, so there, there's, a, there's two common issues that people usually face when they retopologize in Maya. One is that their, their mesh that they're bringing in from let's say ZBrush or a scan is so high res that the computer just can't handle it. It can't really display it properly loaded in, in the viewport. The other is once you start to retopologize, the mesh that you're using for your retopology starts to slow down your system as well. And then yes. when you have both of those sort of combined, things tend to slow down a lot. So we tr we tried this now with this technique here, we're using a 45 million poly version. We just <laughs> took this guy and subdivided him to oblivion. And it actually works. It's not super smooth performance, but it means you can actually uh, have him in Maya. Yeah. So but also realistically, you know, you probably shouldn't have 45 million no. polys in here, but now we can. <laughs> See smoke coming out of your computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So basically, this, this technique here involves, uh, revolves around using a GPU cache. This is a, a feature found in the Lembic, and they were, they were using the Alembic exporter to uh, to just uh, speed up your uh, your file significantly. Alembic so, is just pretty great. Alembic is amazing. So the way you can find this by going under cache, GPU cache. If you can't see the GPU cache, you're going to have to load the plugin, which you can find under Windows. Settings and preferences and the plugin manager. This is where you would load all your plugins. And now you can search for GPU and you just have a GPU cache.mml and just load that. Make sure that's loaded. So now we just go to GPU cache, cache, GPU cache, and export selection. There's basically only one setting you're gonna have to, to worry about here is current frame. If not, you're just gonna get the entire 200 frames, mm. which is gonna make it infinitely fast, also bigger in space. If you are using animation though, like let's say you want to preview your, your animation, you can do this and now you're gonna get a far, far better preview of your animation in yeah. basically real time. So we can just save this under GPU cache and you have to export it out first and then we can delete this guy. We can go to cache, GPU cache and import and then we do GPU cache and now you can see that it loads up as zero polygons but it still looks the same. That's pure magic. It's pure magic. It's super handy. So one of the features of the GPU cache is that you can use make live on it. So now we can just start to uh, read topo on this. Ta-da. So presumably because this is a GPU cache, now I don't know a lot about this stuff, but uh, I would assume that instead of it being uh, loaded from the hard drive where it's getting it's getting stored in RAM then it just gets stored directly on your GPU and yes. it uses the, the I guess the VRAM or something on your GPU which is a lot faster to access also why you know rendering with GPU and stuff is, is a lot faster exactly so now you can just safely just go about your day and actually get some retopo done uh, you might still have issues with the tool actually being slow because it is a bit slow but um at least performance in Maya is gonna be far better. If you wanna learn more about retopology itself, we have a lot of free videos on our channel as well yeah. on how to retopologize in Maya where we cover all of these techniques. I would assume a lot of people do because those tend to be the most popular videos we have. <laughs> people seem to love retopo. People obsessed with it. 
So <laughs> I'm just retoping now because I just kind of go into auto mode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is a it's a really handy trick. So you know, and thanks to Will for yeah. for pointing it out to us. It's it's definitely been interesting trying to stress test this. You know, we're just like Henning said, we're just showing a three million poly poly mesh here, but we try with eleven, we try with forty four. Yeah. 44 we could definitely see some struggle but again maybe if you have like i would be interested like what could you load on a new rtx card mm. or so the gpu that we have i should mention is a 980 ti and so the performance is okay uh, maybe a 1080 obviously that would be better but the new rtx cards i'll be interested to see what they could actually load on there so in short this was uh, our one weird trick <laughs> yeah the to, doctors uh, don't want you to know about yeah so if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see get notifications, just click the little bell button, and uh, you should get a notification every time there is a new video. Thanks, guys.